Social behavior is all around us. It shapes our lives in simple ways and in important ways. I'm Chuck Wigdell, and in this series, we're gonna introduce SOCPROG, a popular tool for analyzing social data. In our last video, we downloaded the uncompiled version of SOCPROG, and now we focus on loading data for analysis. In order to do this, we have to first familiarize ourselves with the sample data sets that come with SOCPROG. We'll look at the data structures that SOCPROG accepts, and we will walk through the steps of loading that data. Let's open SOCPROG from the desktop. When SOCPROG opens, there are actually two windows that are in use. The first is the user interface, and the second is a command window. You have to keep both of these open because some of the outputs will appear in the command window. If you close the command window, the master screen closes. SOCPROG comes with 10 sample data sets in Excel files. If you installed SOCPROG in the default directory, you get to the sample data sets by following this path. Remember that we're working with the compiled version. If you used the uncompiled version, the location of the sample data sets is different. You can learn more by watching my video on the uncompiled version. The names of the files are easy to interpret. First, every file begins with SIM. This is just to remind us that the data is simulated. These files are notional and don't represent actual research data. The next thing to know is that even though there are 10 files, they only represent four unique studies. Two of the data sets track the location of individuals as they move. If you're interested in movement analysis, we have a video for that, but for now, we can just ignore them. This leaves us with eight remaining files for two studies. The first simulated study codes individuals with alphanumeric identification codes. The second simulation uses numeric identification codes. So, if a file ends with an A, the file belongs to the alphanumeric simulation. And if the file ends with an N, the file belongs to a numeric simulation. For each study, we have access to primary data and supplemental data. In both cases, the supplemental data is the sex and age of each individual. Thus, the supplemental data has the word sex in the middle of its title. You are probably wondering why there are three files worth of primary data for each study. The reason is because SOCPROG accepts data in three different formats. Each study gives us similar data in each of these different formats. These three formats are linear, dyadic, and group. We'll explain each of these formats in a moment. For now, notice that the primary data has three letters in the middle of the file name which indicate the format of the data. Lin indicates linear, dia indicates dyadic, and group indicates group data. Now I mentioned briefly before that the test data sets are in Excel format. That means that you can use either XLS or XLSX file format. Your other option is to use comma-separated ASCII files. Once you've worked with the data, you can save it as a SOCPROG2 file and then reload it again for later use. This option might save you time in the long run because not only does SOCPROG2 file format save the data, but it also saves the settings that you use to perform your analysis. So using this format, you can return to your analysis where you left off. One other option that we'll discuss in a later video is that you can directly load an association matrix from Excel or ASCII. This is handy if you're developing an association index that SOCPROG doesn't support, but it has less functionality. I said earlier that there were three modes of data that SOCPROG accepts, linear, dyadic, and group. Any observation, regardless of mode, begins with the date and time at which the observation was collected. Next, we have the conditions that the observation was made under, such as the location or behavior that the individuals were engaged in. Finally, we have the individuals which were observed at this time and under these conditions. What differentiates the three modes of data from one another is the way that individuals are recorded. In linear mode, there is only one individual for each observation. In dyadic mode, each observation has exactly two individuals. In group mode, all members in a group are recorded on the same line. Now, we're going to take a brief digression to introduce an important concept in behavioral studies about the quality of the observations that a researcher is able to collect. The main distinction is between an interaction and an association. An interaction is an explicit behavior that clearly links two individuals. 
The classic example of interaction is grooming, but other examples might be mating, sharing food, or in the case of these swans, fighting. Association is defined by spatial or temporal proximity. Association is a lower quality of data because we are only assuming that there is an interaction. This image of three chimpanzees helps capture the distinction between interactions and associations. If we were collecting interaction data, we would say that the two chimpanzees on the left are interacting, but we would not include the chimpanzee on the right in our data. However, if we were collecting association data, we would include all three chimpanzees in the same group. And in so doing, we would sacrifice information about the specific behaviors of each individual. Interaction tends to be a directional behavior. In this example, we can describe the behavior of feeding as going from the adult bird to the newborn bird. Thus, the probability that the adult feeds the newborn may be high, while the probability that the newborn feeds the adult will be almost zero. Since association assumes interaction based on co-occurrence, Association indices produce symmetric results. In this example, two hornbills have arrived at a feeding station at the same time, and we associate one with the other. We make this assumption every time they're together. Thus, the probability that A associates with B is equal to the probability that B associates with A. Later, we'll encounter some analytical techniques which require a symmetric matrix. But now, let's go back to the modes of data and see how interaction and association affect our choice of mode. If you're working with interaction data, you must use group or dyadic modes. If you're working with association data, it's recommended that you use group or linear modes. Technically, you could record association data using dyadic mode, but that would be very cumbersome. There are two final things that we should take note of in our primary data files before we move on to examine the supplementary data. First, notice that the field names for each column don't have any spaces or punctuation. If you have spaces or punctuation, they won't be read in properly. Second, notice how individuals are coded in dyadic and group modes. The individuals are in the same column with spaces separating them. That means you might have to pre-process your data to get it into this form. Now, let's take a look at the supplemental data. The supplemental data is information about the individuals that doesn't change over the course of the study. Therefore, the individual identifiers in the primary and secondary data set serve as a link between the two files. One of the first things that you should do is make sure that the IDs match. Next, we want to make sure that we don't use the same field name in both the primary and supplemental data. My recommendation is to put an underscore sup suffix at the end of every supplemental field name. If you have missing data, use blank cells for alphanumeric fields and not a number for numeric fields. Notice that when I close these files, I'm not saving the changes I just made to them. So now we're ready to load one of the sample files. We go back to the SOC Prog Master screen, click Input Data, and a window pops up where we can select the type of file that we want to load. Since we're going to work with the sample data sets, just select Excel or CSV. Leave View Summary checked, and I'll show you why in a second, and press Go. We're going to select Sim Group N. If you're loading an Excel file, you'll be asked which worksheet you want to load. SOCPROG asks if you want to convert the data structure. We're going to convert to linear just to demonstrate this option. SOCPROG asks if you have supplemental data. We say yes. And again, we select the worksheet of our data. Then SOCPROG gives us a summary of the data that we've just read in. It is an extremely good idea to check this summary carefully to make sure that your data was read in properly. First, look at the header of the summary. Notice that we read in data that was in group mode, but converted it to linear. So while the original data had 70 observations, now we have transformed it, and there are 299 observations. Date, place, and behavior are all fields that were in the original data. However, there are seven new fields that SOCPROG has added. 
Line, order, and record help us map from the original data structure to the new data structure. Line is the observation in the original data set. See how there are 70? Order indicates the order in which the individual was named on the line in the original data file. Record is the record in the new data structure that the line and order refer to. SOCPROG automatically converts date to year, month, day, and hour. This is useful for setting sampling periods, which is something that we'll do in the next video. Notice that for IDs, the summary tells us how many individuals we have, 20. But even though we have numeric IDs, SOCPROG treats them as alphanumeric. Numerically, we tend to think of the maximum ID as 20, but alphanumerically, the last ID is 9. NumRec is the number of records containing an individual in the unrestricted data set. In the next video, we talk more about restrictions and explain this field in more detail. Let's save this. When we do, SOCPROG wants to save as a .mat file. This is a MATLAB file. Now, we have to be very careful about how we name this file because the data is no longer in the original group format. So I'll rename it First Experiment. So now, we've downloaded SOCPROG, we have loaded a data set, and we're ready to start doing analysis in our next video. If you want to learn more about data structures, I recommend Hal Whitehead's book or his paper.